Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share some makeup tips with you that are um, with application and just keeping makeup on. I feel like I have a huge hair in front of my face. Just tips on keeping your makeup on and how I apply it, why I apply it that way and all that. So that is what I'm going to be talking about today. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I share new videos every single week, girl. Um, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Just click that button below, hit the subscribe, or there's a watermark if you're on your desktop. Just click that button below. I share new videos every single week. Make sure you click on the notification bell too as well. And always leave me a comment too. I always answer back on all of my comments. So please make sure you leave me a comment. I love interacting with you. You can also follow me on Instagram as well. If you follow me on Instagram, please leave me a comment when you see my um you know posts pop up just leave me a comment and again i love interacting with you so please 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 okay when i apply my lipstick i always outline my lips now i have uneven lips because of my birth defect so i have to create lips i don't have a normal upper lip so i have to overdraw my lips but i always make sure that i use my lip liner to fill in my lips and the reason that I do that is it keeps my lipstick on longer so I always do that so if you are having trouble keeping your lipstick on always line your lips with lip liner and you don't have to go outside your line okay just line your total lip and then fill it in with a lip liner it will keep your lipstick on I promise you now for me I'm really picky about the lip liners that I use. I like the ones from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm just stuck on hers right now. I've tried some other ones. Lancome's pretty good too. I like Lancome. I do have a Lancome one. I really like um, Lancome. I do like Charlotte Tilbury is my favorite. So this is Pillow Doc. This is Ideal. Um, Iconic Nude is another one from Charlotte Tilbury. I really like. I recently purchased one from um, Chanel and I didn't like it. It didn't stay on really long. It ended up bleeding. So what I look for in a lip pencil, I don't want something that's too stiff because I want to feel like it's like I'm putting a crayon on my lips. You know what I mean? So I don't want anything that's so really stiff, but I also don't want anything too creamy because if it's too creamy, that lip pencil will bleed on me. Okay. So look for something that has a really nice consistency. That's not too creamy. I know it's hard. It's hard to explain. That's why I'm sharing the ones that I like. These are the these are the ones that I really like. I like the consistency on it because it goes on really good, but it's not too creamy. And then always fill in your lips because it will help prevent your lipstick from bleeding. I don't like to always keep powdering my face. Um, it depends on the foundation that I'm wearing. Sometimes instead of powdering my face, I like to blot my face. I don't like the blotting papers. I've used those in the past. They actually, I'm a hairstylist. They remind me of perm papers. You know, the little papers you roll a little, that's what they remind me of. Um, but I always feel like it just takes my makeup off. What I like to use to blot my face off if I feel like it's getting too shiny is I like to use my little blotterazzis. This is from, I can't see the thing with my, let's see if you can. But this is from the um, Beauty Blender. I love these and it comes in this cute little case here as you can see and on the back side it's like vented. What it looks like, it looks like a big beauty blender that's been cut in half and it's flat. What you're supposed to do with this, what I do with this, is if I'm out somewhere I will take, you know, I will get water from a faucet or something, just a little bit. They say you're not supposed to do that but that's how I use these. Or you can get like this Evian spray. And you can just spray your blotterazzi with a little bit of this. They do sell smaller cans of this, so if you have a big enough purse, you can just get like a little mini size of the Evian water. And you just spray this. Then you take it and you just go like this. I love these. I love these. You get two of them in here. Keep this little this little plastic thing. So if you use one, they you you know they're not like touching each other but always make sure that after you use this to clean it too when you clean it it's going to get huge it's going to expand like a beauty blender would but instead of getting fat it's just going to get really long 
So make sure that you keep this clean, clean it like you would a beauty blender and these will last you a long time. I, I bought these several years ago and I could still use them. Another tip too is always set your makeup. This is my hands down favorite powder ever that I've ever, ever tried. And I've tried La Mer powder. I've tried um, the new peach um, Too Faced that everybody likes, I've tried that. I haven't tried the Cody. I tried that years ago, I hate the smell, but I heard that there's one that's uh, doesn't have a scent, but honestly, I don't think it's gonna, it's just not gonna measure up to this one. But this is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the airbrushed, it comes in a container like this. It's just a little compact. It's, and you can see I've hit pan. And see, I hit pan. Oh my gosh, this stuff is amazing. I promise you, I have converted so many people. This is the best, best powder. Now, some people can't get past the fact that it's pressed. They want that, that you know, uh, loose powder. I'm telling you, this is the best powder. It sets your makeup beautifully and it's not heavy. You're not gonna see it laying on your face. You're not gonna look powdery and cakey, you won't, but it will set your makeup. And you can touch up with this too. I love this. Seriously, the best powder I've ever used. I don't know what she did. I don't know what she put in this stuff, but I love it. I love it. I love it. I haven't found anything as good as that. I love it. Let's talk about mascara. When you're applying your mascara, make sure that you apply your lower lashes first, because if you apply your upper lashes and then your lower lashes, you're going to get, you're going to get a, oops, a boo boo. So always, always make sure that you apply your lower lashes first and wiggle your brush, wiggle your brush as you're putting it on. That sort of teases your lashes and builds them up and gets them thicker. It takes me because I've really, I got really fine, really fine, fine lashes. Um, so it takes me at least five coats of mascara. It doesn't matter what I use. I, I just need that. So, but when I apply it on, I start from the base and then I wiggle it up, wiggle it up, wiggle it up. And I always, always, always curl my lashes first. Use a really good eyelash curler. Now everybody has different shaped eyes. The one that works for me is the one from Tarte. I love this one. Now, if you have really, really, really stubborn eyelashes, you could do the hair dryer trick where you take a hair dryer and you hold it on your eyelash curler to heat it up. Now, if you do that, please do not hold it there long and then put it on your eye because you are going to burn your skin off. What you need to do first before you put it on your eye is you've got to test it on Test it on the back of your hand and see how hot it is. If it's hot, don't put it on your eye. Let it cool off a little bit. You don't want it to be hot. You just want to warm it up a little bit. And even after that, if you go to put it by your eye and you're like, ooh, take it away, please use common sense when you do that. But I do heat this up occasionally. Um, I will do that to curl my eyelashes. They do have an eyelash curler and I don't have it in front of me. I shared in a video recently um, that, that heats up. The, the curling, that lash curler just didn't work for me. I think my eye shape just didn't work for it, so it didn't work for me, but they do have heated eyelash curlers. To me, the best beauty tool for putting on foundation, and I've used everything, but I always come back to the same thing, is a beauty blender. Now, please no judgments, because I just used this today, so it's stained, okay? but I love using a beauty blender. The reason why I love using this, and I've used some imitations and I have not found one that works for me, that not only puts my makeup on really good, but I haven't found one that lasts. Like I have washed this so many times already. I had this one for eight months already. It's not falling apart. I use it every single day. I have traveled with it. It's not falling apart and I clean it every single time before I use it, I clean it. And you always wanna use this damp not soaking wet, so you, you know, I always wash it off first, you know, with soap, with beauty, I actually use the beauty blender soap, and I rinse it out really good, I squeeze it, then I take a towel and I squeeze it with the towel. So you want it damp, you don't want it springing wet. But what I like about using this is I feel like the foundation really gets on my face. It gets in, which is gonna sound gross, but it gets in my pores. That's why you have to clean your makeup off really good every single night. But it gets in my pores, so it really gets on my face. It melts with my skin, my foundation, so it looks like skin. Whenever I use a brush, and I have some nice brushes that work well, but I just, 
I feel like this works better. I just feel like it really keeps my makeup on really, really well. And another thing that I do with my beauty blender is I will use, because I use a different foundation on my nose, I use a powder foundation. I'm trying to find it as I am talking to you. I use my Lancome Double Wear. So I will take my, and it comes with a sponge, but I don't like that one. So I just take this and I will put it in here and I will apply my foundation to my nose there. So you can even use this to apply powder. I've seen people that have used this to set their powder. You know, they will put it in loose powder and they will put it on their face. So I love this beauty blender. So if you wanna have a really nice, flawless look to your foundation, I think the beauty blender is better than any brush out there. That's just my opinion. If you wanna give, add a little bit of a, a highlight look, especially to the upper part of the cheeks, this is a trick that, that works for me and I know that several of you have tried this as well. If you've been following me for a while, you've heard me share this, but I always use a highlighter right here on my upper cheeks. The reason I put it there is because if I put it too low on me, um, I have a little bit of texture on my face, so I, I, I need to move it up here where I have less of that, number one. And number two, as we age, for me, I feel like I need to move everything up. I need to move everything up on my face. So this one's from Too Faced. It's a very subtle highlighter. So what I do, and I'm not gonna put it on my face because I like the way my makeup looks today. But what I will do, and it's already done anyway, so what I do is I will take it, my brush, I will put it in there, and I will apply it right here on the top part of my cheek, just right there. Then I go in with my blush, and I'll put it right under that. And what that will do is it will just give you a glow with thin look. So it won't look you like you just slapped a highlighter on top of your face, it actually gives you a nice glow to your face. People will come up to you and go, wow, what did you do differently? You look so different today. And that's why, that's the trick. So if you want to get that nice glow within, put a little bit of a highlighter right here, but use a really subtle highlighter. I, like I said, I really like this one because it's very subtle. So put it right there on the top part of your cheek, then apply your blush and you'll get a beautiful natural glow. And one more tip. If you are like me and you have fine lines and wrinkles, especially when I smile, you see them, make sure that you are applying your concealer just where you need it. Don't put it all over your eyes. Don't put it down here. Just put it right where you need it. Now, I've already done my makeup, but that's where I put it right there because that's where I have the little discoloration. This is the concealer that I love. I've used many. It took me a while to find one that works for me with my aging eyes and I love it. Use very, 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 very little of this. And I mean very little. I have a video and if I can remember, I will link it above, but use very little of it. Just apply it right there. I just use my pinky, I apply it. Then I take my beauty blender and I just blend it out and that's it. I don't put it all under my eye. If I put it all under my eye, no matter what you put there, it's going to accentuate your wrinkles. It was hard for me to figure that out because I was so used to years and years and years putting it all under there, but as we age, we can't do that anymore. So before I was saying that I use a beauty blender to apply my, my dual finish, I started putting a powder on my nose and I don't, like, I don't put foundation on my nose anymore. The reason that I don't is it just doesn't stay. I wear reading glasses, and when I wear my sunglasses, it just melts off my face. So what I use now is a foundation powder. The one that I like is from Lancome. It's the dual finish. As I showed you before, I just take my beauty blender, I put it in there, and I apply it on my nose. That is it. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really hope that it was helpful and informative. Please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share this video. Helps me so much. Helps my channel so much. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Follow me at Instagram. Leave me a comment. That is it. Thank you so much and I will see you real soon. Bye.